If I had 50 bucks, I could buy six of these arrows or this one arrow. Hmm. Now when it comes to uh, buying things, uh, arrows can be an overlooked part of your equipment list. Of course, people will uh, splurge on the bow, but often forget to buy the arrows. So when you do go shopping for arrows, you will come across a multitude of arrows from different price ranges, different brands, and different qualities. And picking arrows does require some nuanced knowledge. It isn't necessarily hard, but you kind of have to know what you're looking at. And I'll go through perhaps some of the finer details in other videos, but today we're going to talk about the thing which most people see first, and that is price. Um, you can get arrows for a very large range of um, values. You go from uh, really cheap Chinese fiberglass arrows, which might be one or two dollars each. Um, I'm using these uh, Alibo carbon arrows, which are around five to six dollars each, which is about right for mid-range arrow. And you have these really expensive uh, shafts, which are perhaps up to fifty dollars each. So the burning question would be, why would you spend like $50 on one arrow and therefore, you know, $600 for a whole set versus uh, you know, a whole set for um, $70? And the ultimate question is, is a more expensive arrow better? The answer is yes, but do you need a better arrow? The cost of arrows will come down to several factors. Uh, they include material, shape, straightness, and consistency. Uh, what I've got here is an Eastern X10. Uh, this is the most common and popular shaft used in modern elite competitions, including the Olympic Games. Um, and over here, I've got an Eastern Apollo, which is from the same company, but it's a fraction of the price. It's about six or seven dollars per shaft. Uh, this is around um, 40 or 50 dollars per shaft. That's a very huge price range. And like I said, they look the same. They look like arrows. Well, what's the difference? Well, for starters, we have to compare um, perhaps a, a firearms analogy here. This is what you might call regular ammunition or like just an arrow, no offense intended. This is what you might refer to as match grade, that is purpose uh, made specifically for target shooting, which means there are certain qualities and characteristics which will make this much more appropriate for the purpose of precision shooting than a regular arrow. So let's talk through the Eastern X10 and we'll discuss why this is very different and more expensive. Firstly, while you can't see the difference, it actually isn't just a carbon arrow. It's a carbon aluminium arrow. There's a carbon shell, so the outside is carbon fiber, and the inside layer is aluminium. It's hollow, of course, but it's carbon and aluminium. So we have two materials working in tandem compared to just carbon, which brings some unique advantages in terms of its stiffness and its flexibility without compromising things like weight. Um, there is also a slight difference in shape. Now, uh, different arrows are different shapes. You might think arrows are straight. Well, actually, target arrows are either tapered or are barrel shaped. And I believe the X10 is barrel shaped, which means it's thicker towards the middle and thinner towards the ends. The purpose of this, both the shape of the arrow and the relative diameter of the arrow, is uh, its performance over distance. So the barrel shape gives it better performance aerodynamically and the thinner profile gives it less wind drift. And especially when shooting long distance, it takes about one and a half seconds to two seconds to hit the target. The arrow will be blown off by even a slight breeze. So having a better wind profile will allow it to be more consistent on target and therefore affect your scores less. And this is a very, very big advantage um, for the elite shooters. You need millimeter perfection on target at 70 meters. Now, one of the biggest uh, factors of cost is straightness. Uh, you might have heard the phrase straight as an arrow. Uh, surprisingly, arrows actually aren't that straight. They are, but in terms of exactly how straight they are, um, you won't see it with the naked eye, but these top end arrows are manufactured with a very, very fine precision. And we're talking fractions of an inch, like point zero 
two millimeters, for example. So we'll get like an arrow, like one of these ones, then they'll be straight. Of course they're straight, it's an arrow, but it might just be like um, a one millimeter or 0.5 millimeter difference in straightness. Whereas this one might be 0.0002 um, millimeters. So the more expensive the arrow, the more the straightness is guaranteed. Now, does it make a difference? Well, if you took a look at the extreme end, if you take like a branch is full of knots and bends and you shoot that, it'll flop around everywhere. A similar thing happens with arrows to a much, much lesser degree because arrows are mostly straight. But even a slight deviation in straightness will affect the flight of the arrow. Again, you probably won't see this. But when you're shooting at the top level, when you need perfect consistency every single time, you don't want an arrow that is going to slightly drift or slightly spiral because of its slightly different straightness. And that also leads to the final criteria, which is consistency and quality control. Um, these arrows are manufactured to be almost exactly the same for every single batch. And there are still differences in every single batch. Um, you don't normally mix and match um, sets of arrows. So you buy like a dozen of these, you will shoot that dozen for that particular bow. Um, you can shoot a different dozen, um, but you normally try and match them as close as possible. Um, archers who are at the very top end are known to do things like measure the individual uh, tips to make sure they're within one grain of each other and so on. So all the components are manufactured to be as consistent as possible and some archers will be very picky and choosy over which shaft they use. Whereas these ones are made with a much uh, wider tolerance, so again, very fine tolerance, very wide tolerance, which means that it's not gonna be as consistent, as straight, the weight won't be as exact, but the people using them won't need that level of consistency. So to put simply, yes, this very expensive arrow uh, will fly better, um, once I put um, fletchings on it, uh, than this cheaper arrow. But does it really matter? As I've already hinted at, these arrows are made specifically to be shot at 70 meters. These are well-known parameters. We know exactly what we're shooting at and how far it is. So the designers will, will engineer an arrow that is going to be as ideal as possible under those conditions. So if you are doing precision target shooting at long distance, that an X10 or a similar arrow will be perhaps the best arrow you can use. It's made for that purpose and will minimize the amount of drift and inconsistency which you can't necessarily control. That said, if you're not shooting precision targets at 70 meters like an elite athlete, then you don't really need one of these. You can actually get away with a regular, cheaper carbon arrow just as fine. Now, I use both. Um, not so much the X10 these days. I use similar arrows, which are slightly cheaper, like the ACE. But uh, I use the Alibaba Carbons a lot for my traditional shooting. Why? Because I'm not doing precision target shooting. I'm doing speed shooting or rapid shooting, or I'm shooting a lot of quantity of arrows rather than quality of shooting. So I know I'm gonna go through a lot of these arrows. I might end up breaking or losing these arrows. I don't wanna hammer $50 arrows into the same target 100 times. I don't mind chucking away or breaking a few of these arrows to cost me $5 or less. So that's gonna be a very big difference. I'm shooting short distance targets, um, shooting more quantity and for practice rather than precision target shooting. Not every shot that I do with these arrows needs to count, whereas every shot with this arrow does need to count. And that's why we have a very big difference in price. I'm happy with this because I care less about this. If I hear it break or crack, I'm like, damn, it's annoying. But if I hear this, this crack, I'm gonna start crying tears from my wallet. If you are doing target shooting, you should also consider your skill level. Uh, frankly, if you are like buying these expensive arrows thinking they'll make you shoot better, they won't. They can improve your scores, but they won't make you a better archer. What this means is that if your skill level is such that you're grouping at 70 meters, like the whole target face, this won't make things any better. 
So you may as well use a cheaper arrow like this because again, more affordable, you don't mind losing or breaking some, whereas if you hit the target frame with this arrow, that's goodbye $50. And look, I've brought these to competitions. Um, I have a set of these, I bought them for myself and I thought, you know what, I wanna shoot the best arrow. And when you are not the best archer on the day or in your own life even, then this is not gonna really help you. It's just gonna be a waste of money. So you may as well go for a more affordable, sustainable shaft like this one and practice with this until you get better. The benchmark is, that if you can group decently with a cheaper arrow, you will group better with a more expensive arrow. But if you can't group at all, this would not make a difference. See, if you're having a bad practice session and your arrows are like all over the target, as many of us will suffer through, your coach won't go, oh, you know, if you bought some X10s, it'd be much, so much better. They wouldn't do that. That's all on you as the archer. Now, if I'm shooting well, my coach might tell me, you know what, you should buy a better arrow so you can group better. But they might tell me to buy a better arrow if I'm shooting badly because a good arrow doesn't make an archer good. So for someone who is starting archery or going through an intermediate phase, then you might want to stick with a more moderately priced arrow and only go to the top end if you're feeling a lot more confident and qualified to shoot more competitively. And if you're not doing precision shooting and you just want to dump as many arrows down range as possible, then sure, get cheaper arrows. These arrows are not made for precision shooting, they're made to be shot. And these are so affordable that you may as well treat them as expendable ammo. I'm not going to cry if these break or I lose these or something falls apart because, again, I'll buy another set fairly easily. Um, in fact, these are so cheap. Um, these were, again, these are the Alibo carbon arrows. They sell them um, by the half dozen for, I think, 35 US dollars. So when I first bought these arrows, I thought it was $35 each because I'm used to spending $35 plus per shaft. So when I ordered like, you know, 18 of these arrows, the, um, the owner came back to me saying, are you sure you want that many arrows? Because we sell them about the six. And I went, oh, actually, and we fixed the order, which is amazing by the way, but at the same time, that's such an affordable amount of arrows. And this is why they're, they're pretty popular amongst uh, many trad shooters, because they're simple carbon arrows, which look nice to get the job done. So at the end of the day, you can buy more expensive arrows, but it really depends on what you need them for. Just understand that yes, expensive arrows can be better, but you might not need a more expensive arrow. So think about what you're shooting arrows for, what your goals are, and what your skill level is. The more you need precision, the better suited you are for the more expensive arrows. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't really need precision, then cheap arrows are just fine. There are some things you can watch out for, like spine rating, length, and so on. But in terms of cost, you don't have to break the bank if you don't need to. Anyway, I hope that points you in the right direction. Um, thank you all for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time.